Yapple Pie Broadcasting and the City of Cottonwood proudly present Inside Cottonwood, an inside look at the decisions and issues of the City of Cottonwood. Brought to you by Arizona Smile Designers. hosting uh, Inside Cottonwood. Welcome. And uh, wanted to just give you a little bit of background today for, uh, for what we're going to be discussing is the Mickelson um, Memorial Marathon, which is coming upon us here on April 20th. So it's quickly approaching. And uh, this, is, this will be our fifth year running the, uh, the Mickelson Marathon and the memorial for Brian Mickelson as uh, Brian was quite an avid um, enthusiast of all sports. And we'll get into that here in a little bit. Um, but I would like to also welcome as our guest today, um, a distinguished guest uh, today is Dr. Samuel Butman, and he is MD, let me, let me go through these, okay, if you don't mind, M M H A F A C C F S C A I, Chief of Staff of the Verde Valley Medical Center, Associate Professor of Medicine at the University of Arizona College of Medicine. And if I, when I, and then you're currently Chief of Staff, like I said, at the hospital as well at Verde Valley Medical Center. So. I'd like to welcome you today. Thank you for actually taking your time and uh, joining us today. I know that uh, um, I've, 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 we've, we've had a chance to meet before, and it was actually at the, oh. um, I think it was at the, at the, uh, the recreation center when the hospital was actually um, providing the blood pressure machine, which was rather interesting. And uh, so we were all kind of getting on there to check our blood pressure. And so we were having a lot of fun with that at that time period. But I guess that's another story for a different time than Dr. Butman. I'm just impressed having been to the rec center uh, as infrequently, guilty as I am, of going there that the blood pressure machine is working well. And it is. Uh, looks good and people are using it. That's right. Yeah, we just have to clean it up every now and then because people write their their, their <laughs> actual blood pressure in blue ink on the actual screen, and there so we have go. to clean that off. Yeah. Um, but I'd also like to introduce uh, Trevor Faust. Trevor is the fitness uh, supervisor at the Cottonwood Recreation Center, and you know, Trevor, you can probably expand a little bit more than what I could as it pertains to fitness and where we're going to head a little bit today on our discussion. But again, marathon running. Um, marathons are rather interesting. We, uh, as I look back on my career, which has been a long time, and I've had almost 36 years now in an actual uh, public service. And during that time period of parks and recreation management and parks management, the, the one thing I've seen with marathons, they've been increasing dramatically over the last 20 years. It's rather interesting as well. And we also see the context of fitness um, being more of a, um, uh, I, I think it's one of those things that people are looking at as longevity increases in individuals. We, we look at longevity and we, we kind of think, well, what is it that causes people to live longer? And um, so we, we look at maybe, um, you know, I think that this is a question for you, Dr. Butman, is does running marathons or running in particular have anything to do with longevity, health, and fitness? That's a great question. And, and as a scientist, to some degree, let alone as a physician, running is important. Whether or not it has a direct impact on longevity, probably. But what's really important is the things you do so you can run, the things you can do so you can run a marathon. You eat differently. You tend not to be overweight. You tend to be watching what you uh, do. So I think all those other parts of getting ready for a marathon and then go ahead and running the marathon is really what it's all about. And then, of course, there's the runner's high, which is... Just, I think that just, you know, every day that you run, you get a runner's high, it makes you eat differently, feel differently, relax more, et cetera. And that's really, that's probably what's, uh, what the key is to longevity. So is there, um, as, as we look at the actual marathon um, aspect of, of what makes people run marathons, is there a specific mindset and, and that aspect of a challenge, does that also go with marathon running? Or? So what you're pointing out is that I don't run marathons. <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I don't either, so okay. I'm just asking right. you. I so thought you, maybe you did. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be uh, in this. <laughs> and, um, I, will so, I will say, though, since my wife will probably watch this, she could run marathons. She's an easy runner. I find that very irritating. <laughs> my daughter-in-law can run a marathon without any training. I find that also very irritating. 
I can't run very far. So I try to do other things, a bicycle, which I don't do very much of now, but we're trying. Um, but again, I, even when I do the activities, and I know you do because you're in pretty good shape, whatever it is you do, there is a, a high at the end of it and it feels good. And that carries into your next meal. If you, typically, if you've had a good workout and you're feeling very good, you don't eat the big, heavy pasta meal. Uh, maybe if you've run a marathon or the day before you've eaten pasta, which I won't say I do or don't, but uh, I think that's all part of the package. So eating right, and sure. then actually definitely the exercise, the physical activity is, is not only a mindset, it, it actually is and has to become a lifestyle. Um, as we take a look at that. And I think it's one of the things at the Recreation Center that we do promote. It's, it's one of those where we say it's not just a workout, make it a lifestyle. And so I think that, you know, we're comfortable in saying that because we have this big, beautiful building. We have all of this mm -hmm. cardiovascular equipment. We have weight training equipment. We have an indoor pool. We have an outdoor pool. Uh, we have a gymnasium. So our, our goal uh, primarily is to keep people um, happy in what they're doing and enjoying what they're doing as they exercise and, and stay healthy well, and active. Well, I'll mm -hmm. interrupt or I'll add mm -hmm. to what you're saying. That the reality is if you think about your daily life, if you go to the rec center or if you go for a long bike ride or if you go for a very long walk, let's say, or a hike, chances are before the hike you're not going to have a bad unhealthy meal because you know you're going to be going on a hike. You're thinking healthy. And the same is true for the meal that follows. So you can see how they're connected to each other. You can't stop it. It's hard to go out for some junk food or for some a heavy, heavy meal when you've just had a really good workout. You, you intuitively know you don't want to do it. A plate of carrots and other vegetables probably look better than they would on a day when you're just sitting around watching, uh, in this case, basketball like we're going to be doing this weekend. That's right, exactly. So as we talk about food, now Trevor, you're involved in, in, the, in the context of, of fitness and health, and so should someone definitely eat in a special way as they, as they get ready for a marathon or running or just even the activity of physical exercise? Well, definitely. I mean, your behaviors definitely reflect what your goals are going to be. So you, obviously you're going to, like Dr. Bumman was saying, you're going to eat better because you're, it's going to reflect towards your goal. You're not going to eat a bunch of bad food that's going to deter you from attaining, you know, if you're, if you're, shooting for that first place on the marathon run or something. I mean, you're definitely, you're not going to eat that bad, bad food. You're going to be more committed in the long run. And of course, you know, you, for marathon runners, you're going to definitely want to be replenishing carbohydrates and stuff like that because the most readily available fuel you have, especially during long distance running, is muscle glycogen. You're going to be using a lot of glycogen. So those are going to be definitely um, that something that you're going to be looking at before running a big marathon, you, you want to have good, healthy, complex carbs, and uh, and as well as after to replenish those. So you don't want to go out and, and just jam down a lot of fast food before you actually go to a marathon. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not okay. at all. So that's a no-no. Yes. Um, and yeah. it, it, you aren't going to run as fast. Is that what we're saying, or are you just going to throw up along the side? <laughs> yeah, yeah, prob <laughs> yes, probably, both. probably both. Probably both. Indeed. Probably both. Okay. Well, um, I, I know that there's a specific mindset too, and and it's got to be. And since I'm not a runner, and and I've understood and heard that that Dr. Butman actually works out at our recreation center quite mm -hmm. often, and he's actually on the treadmills or and he's doing things. But um, you know it, that mindset to run has got to be something that you have as a goal and as a challenge. And I think that that's something we're gonna um, we're gonna get into here um, as we take a break. We're gonna take a break here and we'll get back on that as to you know maybe what the runner's mindset is. Um, we can maybe go into that a little bit more um, as we take this break. Um, and again, thank you for being with us on Inside Cottonwood. I am your host, uh, Richard Faust, Community Services General Manager for the City of Cottonwood. And we have the distinct pleasure of having uh, Dr. Samuel Butman uh, from Verde Valley Medical Center, and um, uh, also Trevor Faust is the fitness supervisor for the Recreation Center.
8,000 Arizona men, women, and children battle the often debilitating impact of multiple sclerosis every day. You can help find a cure. Register today for Arizona's premier cycling event, Bike MS, Ride the Vortex, May 18th and 19th, presented by Sam's Club. You choose the distance that's best for you from 30 to 150 miles. Proceeds fund research that can make a difference. For information and to register yourself or your team, visit www.bikemsarizona.org. Hello, I'm Richard Faust, uh, Community Services General Manager for the City of Cottonwood. I'd like to welcome you to Inside Cottonwood. And um, uh, with us again are, are Dr. Samuel Butman um, with the Verde Valley Medical Center as well as the Heart and Vascular Center of Northern Arizona. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention here um, is that the Heart and Vascular Center of Northern Arizona also is uh, deeply committed and rooted into our community. And it's really quite an interesting um, aspect as well as a, uh, it's very valuable uh, um, marriage, if you will, with our programming, and especially with uh, the Mickelson Marathon, is they assist us greatly. And um, the uh, I, I was looking at this on the computer, and I pulled information off about the Heart and Vascular Center of Northern Arizona. And you have some incredible um, skilled professionals that work with you, Dr. Butman. And again, the the Heart and Vascular Center of Northern Arizona is a cardiovascular physician practice offering services including general cardiology rhythm, uh, rhythm abnormalities and the treatment of chronic heart vascular conditions. And um, it must be, a, I mean, people have to ask you about that too is, do you enjoy your job? I mean, you must after, I think you wrote me, you've, you've been at this for 30 years. Yeah, let's not go into the time. <laughs> <laughs> I told you already, I'd, I have 36 years in, and so yeah, I figured I'd throw that out. I'm going to be looking you up on the internet yes, you later. Will. <laughs> uh, no, I, I do like it. I chose cardiology Good. because I found it interesting. I thought it was challenging, and uh, uh, you know, dealing with the sick people and trying to make them better, uh, making better people stay better, mm -hmm. uh, keeping health, you know, keeping health. Uh, looking to avoid problems in people who are at risk is, uh, you know, one of our other goals. We don't want people to die suddenly without having at least a chance to prevent that death. Uh, so it, it's it, it's always been interesting. It's always changing. Every person I see is a different person. I don't always call them patients because they're not always patients. They can be, so far you're just a person, you're not a right. patient, and we want to keep it that way. All right. Well, I know that uh, Dr. Paul Hansen, who's my doctor, um, he would definitely say I'm a patient as well as a person in that context because he gives me a hard time all the time. And, and uh, I think it's more of just our relationship. And that's one of the neat things about physicians in this community is they're relational doctors. And I find that rather interesting because other communities that I've come through from, it's not been so much that way. I really think Cottonwood is very blessed to have a, uh, an incredible professional staff of physicians that they do at the, the medical center here. And um, so, and I know that that would be one thing I would definitely do would be to go talk to Paul Hansen, my doctor, before I'd ever run anything even similar to a 10K, because I wouldn't even be able to get past a 10K. Um, so, but that's one thing that, would you recommend that that's one of the things that people do if they set out to run a marathon? Well, I, think, I think if you're uh, young and you've been running, That'd be one thing, and this is going to be so easy to say, but someone your age, yeah, that's right, with the lack of activity that you do, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I think it'd be worthwhile just having a checkup, make sure your blood pressure is okay. There's no other issues. Uh, you know, you want to have your joints in good shape, so you want to have a good outcome. Let alone, you don't want something bad to happen to you. And, and it's the truth is, it's very unusual, even for heart patients who have known heart disease to have bad things occur during a run or whatever. It's, the trick is, you know, it's just like any exercise you're gonna start. You don't wanna start from zero and go to 100 miles an hour. Cause A, you're probably not gonna be able to and that's when that's something's right. gonna happen. Not necessarily to your heart, but to your joints or whatever. So, I see. you know, let's face it. If you jump and do a marathon uh, on April, in April and uh, you're exhausted and useless and you're sore for the next five days, that probably wasn't ideal. That's exactly right. So there's your excuse. Yes, it is. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, Trevor, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head a question directly your, your way. We were talking about attitude and, and the challenge ahead as we look at people that run 
have to be consistent with goals and they set their goals. And I think that that's one thing that I've read about more than anything as well as talk with individuals who are runners, that they have to set goals and one of those is achieving that goal on a continuous basis. So I, I think that I'm throwing that out there to you is, is what is that mindset? Is, that a, it, is it sacrificial? They, they sacrifice uh, for the challenge or what? Do, can you answer that question? Well, I mean, I, I think anyone who's setting goals is, is um, up is it's up for a challenge they're looking to better themselves in a way uh, and, it, and if you achieve that goal it comes with some sort of gratification and um, it, it's called living I, I mean it's <laughs> it's really as simple as that um, you it, there's definitely a mindset you have to have you have to have a, a go-getter mindset when you're setting goals you know and you know, I, you gotta write things down. You gotta, you know, you gotta be real with yourself. You can't just. I, I, I kind of look at setting goals as if, if you, if you don't ever write it down on a piece of paper, or if you don't make it real to yourself, it's it's a dream. It's something that's still not quite attainable. So you gotta write them out. You know, and and be progressive. You gotta have that mindset of, of being progressive as far as attaining your goals you can't just mm. hit you know you can't at your age you can't just run a, a marathon <laughs> if you will i mean you got to be progressive you got to you know have that mindset of um of going after what you your goals are and, and make sure you're setting goals that you can achieve too and so as so as i interrupt you so like is Dr. Butman was indicating because of my age, and I, I, I just can't strap on a pair of shoes and just basically indicate, okay, I'm going to summon up some determination, and I'm going to get out there, and I'm just going to run my body through the world. I can't just do that. I mean, I've got I've to actually come up with a realistic plan, right. and I probably should, at my age, I really should, if I haven't been running before, then I need to definitely check with Paul Hansen, my doctor, and say, all right, Paul, I, I plan on doing this, and he'd look at me and go, you're absolutely nuts because you're not ready. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I think that that is it. I think it's one of those things where um, there's a lot of planning that has to go into these runners. It's just pretty incredible to go out on race day, like down at Riverfront Park, where we start the Mickelson Marathon, and watch these people get ready, gear up, and they're stretching, they're, you know, they're going through all of the motions to get, to get themselves started in this race. And, um, and I think that that's, it's, it's really amazing to watch that. So if you're not a runner, um, I would just challenge you to go down and watch because it's really particularly in interesting to see these people preparing even at the initial, I should say, at the, um, right at the shoot of coming out. They're, they're pretty well ready to go and they've already met it. Their mindset is, this is my challenge for the day and I'm going to do this and it's rather interesting. So um, I guess my, my other thing with uh, questioning, you know, I know that we do an awful lot at the recreation center and um, uh, we, we try to uh, we try to gear people towards activity. We try to gear people towards uh, fitness and keeping people fit. And one of those, and, and even with the Verde Valley Medical Center, they're totally behind us as we do the Looking Good Cottonwood program. Mm -hmm. And the Looking Good Cottonwood program is one of those where we kind of, we do it prior to the Mickelson Marathon. Um, we, we also have, a, I, I think it's called the Mingus Miles Club. And uh, that was part of the Northern Arizona Rehabilitation and Fitness Program, also with Verde Valley Medical Center. And so, um, so I'm throwing out a lot of, about the medical center, but they really help and assist us. And, and I think that they, that there was actually, with the Looking Good Cottonwood Program, they assisted not only just with the monetary aspect of it, um, and, and with the challenge there with people losing weight, because we, we do have a, a problem with obesity in America. Mm -hmm. And it's probably kind of more worldwide, uh, especially in Western you know, civilization countries. But it's one of those things where Looking Good Cottonwood has, I think, assisted us. I know we have over 200 people in the program this year, and it was, uh, it's, it's been quite a program. Do you have any comments on Looking Good Cottonwood? Um, the Verde Valley Medical Center has been excellent. I mean, they've provided us with funds, and, and not only that, we have uh, you know seminars um, that uh, that uh, Verde Valley Medical Center will provide speakers for. And um, I mean, these are medical and health professionals, you know, coming at you with years of experience and knowledge. And I mean, it's just it's it's amazing to have an opportunity to even 
you know, listen to people who have that knowledge and, and have had that education. Um, because our program is, you know, we're, we're geared towards educating the participants. We want to educate them and, and establish um, or help establish the beginning phases of, um, you know, lifelong habits that will that'll affect their quality of life um, now and, and into, their later, into their later years. And uh, so that's what Looking Good Cotton is about, you know. Um, so we're, we're doing the same thing. We're, we're looking at activity as a lifestyle. That's right. And uh, yeah. so that's what we're promoting, and that's what the hospital works in conjunction with us. Um, we're going to take another um, break here uh, for our sponsors. And, uh, again, thank you for joining us uh, as we still have more to go here on Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host, Richard Faust, Community Services General Manager for the City of Cottonwood. Once again, I'm Richard Faust, Community Services General Manager for the City of Cottonwood. Uh, welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. Um, uh, with me today is, is Dr. S Samuel Butman uh, with the Verde Valley Medical Center and uh, as well with the, uh, the Heart and Vascular Center of Northern Arizona, Trevor Faust, who's the uh, fitness uh, supervisor for the Recreation Center. One of the things I wanted to do, and, and I know that um, uh, we wanted to definitely set the stage for the Brian Mickelson Memorial Run and Walk. Um, the Brian Mickelson, and, and I think a lot of people, everybody knows who Brian Mickelson was. Uh, he was both my friend as well as my, my uh, boss for so long. And um, uh, this is a memorial um, and a tribute to Brian. Um, and I think that that's one of the, the, the big aspects of of this run was because he was so committed and so dedicated to activity and keeping himself active in an active lifestyle as he promoted it daily. I watched him many times um, out on the hockey court as he banged him, his body against uh, uh, the side of the runner boards on the hockey rink with his son against other teams from Prescott and I always wondered why he battered himself so badly uh, mm -hmm. in that context of things. But um, uh, he was a go-getter. He was a fighter in many, many senses of the word. Um, uh, Brian both walked and biked and, um, you know, he played hard, he ran hard. Uh, that was who he was, and he, he definitely loved half marathons and marathons, and so he was, he was quite a runner uh, in, in trying to keep in condition and health. Um, besides myself here in front of you, I, I, um, I should take care, better, better care of myself. And, and uh, as Dr. Butman had indicated here earlier, I'm getting a little bit older. Um, I wanted to, to uh, go over this, uh, uh, the marathon, the run, the walk, and everything with you. Again, it is on Saturday, April 20th, 2013. It begins at Riverfront Park here in Cottonwood. Uh, again, it's sponsored by the Heart and Vascular Center of Northern Arizona. Um, as well as the entire care and rehab and sports medicine, um, uh, both Cottonwood and Sedona. Uh, Solomon Running Shoes, and then also Mountain View Villa Apartment Homes of Cottonwood. Uh, there are major sponsors, but again, the Birdie Valley Medical Center is, is primary on all of that as they help us and assist us. Um, the Run or Walk, um, this is the fifth annual Brian Mickelson Memorial Marathon. We have both the half marathon, the full marathon, the 10K and a two mile uh, run walk, which is a fun type of a fun run walk. Um, and again, it's a tribute to Brian Mickelson, uh, who is our city manager and very beloved uh, 
uh, individual. He passed away suddenly on a training run in 2007, and um, uh, he had this passion. And so this is where we are at. We're we're talking about lifestyle, and and uh, it's one of the things we probably should all take a look at is our lifestyle, um, and and making it a better one so that we. Uh, face the future in our, our middle years as well as our senior years and continue to be active. And I know as Dr. Butman had indicated, even our joints and our muscles and things of that uh, area of our bodies, we need to keep conditioned and keep them in shape. I want to let you know that uh, the start times for the marathon is 6 o'clock a.m. on Saturday, April 20th. The half marathon is 7.30 in the morning. Uh, the 10K starts at 7.40. Uh, the two mile starts at 7.50 and they all uh, start and then conclude at uh, Riverfront Park. Uh, the, uh, the registration is both online at cottonwoodaz.gov, uh, and you can also you know, kick in right into the Parks and Recreation uh, Center site, and uh, so you can do all your registration directly there, or you can do it by mail before Friday, April 12th. Um, and then the, uh, the event itself, again, uh, we, are, we will actually have staff out there at 515 in the morning at Riverfront Park, which is 1285 East Riverfront Drive here in Cottonwood. Fees uh, now, right now for the full marathon from April 1st through April 17th are $80, and on race day is $90. The half marathon is $60 and $70 on the race day. The 10K is $40 uh, between uh, April 1st and April 17th. And race day is $50. The two mile is $25 and um, uh, $30 on race day. And um, so we want to make sure that you understand that. Um, the other aspect of it is we're seeing a few more people that are, are definitely coming out and registering early. And I don't think that that's, uh, um, the, the, we've, we've not seen this many people in the past. We have a few more than, than oh, actually uh, 20 to 30 more than we had last year. We have right now about 54 people signed up for the full marathon, 167 for the half marathon, 163 for the 10K, and 73 for the two mile. And one of the, the, the things is we've usually seen is it's the opposite. We see usually about 150 to 180 individuals that are signed up for the two, uh, two mile. And you can see this now as people are making it a lifestyle. Uh, they're progressing upward, so they're progressing to the 10K. The 10Kers are progressing then to the half mile, and, and I mean the half marathon, and then the half marathon definitely are going full marathon. So uh, the word's also getting out more into the Phoenix area, Flagstaff area. Uh, we're seeing more runners from outside the state that are coming into the uh, Mickelson Marathon. So um, right now we're pretty much on track, a little bit ahead of uh, things. Uh, so it's rather uh, interesting. Usually day of race, we'll see probably close to another third to a half more people that actually sign up race day. So we'll see how that goes. But again, um, please contact Cottonwood Parks and Recreation if you have any questions at uh, 928-639-3200. Uh, you can contact the front desk or you can go ahead and send your, um, your uh, applications in for the marathon uh, either online or you can do it by mail. And um, I think that uh, one of the things I wanted to, to actually go back to was Dr. Butman and um, you know, talk to us a little bit more as to how maybe the, the Verde Valley Medical Center meets the challenges. I think we've seen, I've seen so much since I've been here since 1990, and I've seen the Verde Valley Medical Center grow uh, both physically um, and seen a lot of construction and development. I have been a part of the Verde Valley Medical Center uh, in and of itself um, by having a emergency appendectomy. Um, and uh, I was treated so well, I even got up and walked around and talked to doctors I didn't know, and it was rather interesting because I think I was under drugs at that time, <laughs> but I felt very good. And, and, uh, but the, the, the main thing was is I was assisted very well, yeah. and it was a very good process as I went through. So um, can you comment on how they've grown over the last you well, know, 10 years? I, my first thought is not to so much comment on how the hospital's grown. I've been here for about six and a half years, and I know from the, the history of the hospital before, from my patients and some of the staff, we've come a long way. I mean, the six years that I've been there, so for the six years before, it had come a long way, and the next six years, it's really changed. We've really, you know, we're, we're proud of our, uh, what are called PRC scores, which means our signs of excellence. We're, we're happy about how customers, patients, and referring doctors and families look at us. They're, they're more pleased than they used to be, um, and in fact, they're very pleased. In fact, we've won awards. We've won awards in other areas in, in terms of our care. I'm not going to list them all off because just trust me. 
Uh, and so that was something that was never occurring. It just wasn't occurring That's in right. the past. Uh, but to sort of tie it all together, the hospital, healthcare is changing. And our hospital is really ahead of the curve in terms of knowing where healthcare is going. We're very much aware that a hospital will become and is becoming more part of the community. Our job is now to keep you out of the hospital. It's always been that, but actually how the hospital will be paid by the government, by insurers, will actually be paid by keeping you out of the hospital. So getting involved in the Mickelson run, getting involved in other things that are important in the community in terms of keeping you out of the emergency room, preventing things that are preventable, um, become more and more important. So we're gonna be judged by how good we are, we're gonna be rewarded for how good we are. So it's a natural evolution, sort of, a community hospital is just that. It is a community hospital, but it's really gonna become a community, community hospital. hospital. It's gonna become a comu community health care system more than just a hospital. A hospital will be for the very sick people who really need hospital stuff. You're a great example. You had an appendectomy, you probably went home the same day or close to it. In the old days, you'd be in the hospital for a week after an appendectomy. That's right. So we've come a long way. You have. And uh, again, I, 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 I can't stress more than um, when I was there, um, the, the, the relational aspect of the hospital, um, the nursing um, uh, uh, folks that, that helped me through, and the doctors were just tremendous. So again, I, I've seen that come a long way, and I continue to see that even with the board, but you know, the staff are just incredible. And uh, that's one thing I think uh, the Verde Valley is extremely proud of, and we're seeing more of that as, as uh, we grow year to year. Um, I want to uh, just take this moment and thank both of uh, um, my, my, uh, my guests here, distinguished guests, uh, Samuel Butman uh, with the Verde Valley Medical Center. I want to thank him personally for taking his time again uh, for this day. Trevor Faust, uh, fitness supervisor for the Recreation Center, thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time to express uh, the, the, the content of lifestyle and activity uh, for our community. Um, so. I, um, I'm Richard Faust, your host for the day uh, with Inside Cottonwood. Thank you very much and have a good day.